Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, we all have our thoughts on the upcoming Pacquiao-Mayweather fight, or Mayweather-Pacquiao fight, right? May 2nd, 2015. Now, full disclosure, I believe Mayweather wins the fight, but I am a bit like Larry Flint, right? In the ring, I expect Mayweather to win. The question's going to be how it's scored, right? But let's pretend we're Manny Pacquiao. Let's pretend it is May 2nd, 2015, right? In my opinion, the most important round of this fight, where Manny Pacquiao is going to have a decided advantage on Floyd Mayweather, decided, is going to be the very first round, right? Just like it was when Manny Pacquiao faced one Manuel Marquez the very first time. <clears throat> Right? As Sade used to say, it's never as good as the first time. Right? The very first round. I believe Pacquiao is going to come in and he is going to be the dominant fighter. So let's pretend for a moment that you are Manny Pacquiao. <coughs> You've left the locker room. And you're on the way into the ring at the MGM. Right? You're out, you see the crowd, you see the ring, you're walking toward it. In my opinion, Pacquiao will know that the crowd is his. He'll know that in this fight against Floyd Mayweather Jr., there is a charisma gap. That people respect his opponent, but they love him. He's going to know, even though the fight's in the United States, that if the fight were held at Mayweather's own house, if there were more than a thousand people in attendance, the crowd would be on his side. Right? Supporters know Manny Pacquiao is not perfect, just like Bill Clinton's supporters in the 1990s knew that Slick Willie was not perfect. Right? I remember back then, I'd pick up the paper and I'd think to myself, what is Bill Clinton up to now? Right? Bill Clinton was the kind of guy who, right, was viewed as having a wandering eye before he got elected. Right? Mistresses were coming out the woodwork. Anyone remember Jennifer Flowers? It's kind of hard to believe now. But mistresses were coming out of the woodwork back then. The Clintons were on... 60 minutes, I believe. They openly admitted that they had had problems in their marriage. Then during his presidency, Clinton strayed a bit from his marriage. Then, of course, Clinton lied to the American people about it. Right? I did not have blank with that woman, etc. Then, of course, we came to find out that Bill Clinton wasn't quite telling us the truth, right? We were hearing lines like, it depends on what the meaning of the word is, is, right? Just understand, just look at the polling. Women love Bill Clinton. Just understand, look at the polling. Black people loved Bill Clinton. Underdogs loved Bill Clinton. The Bill Clinton brand was bigger than the man himself. You understood that when politicians went into a room to talk about legislation, you understood that Bill Clinton was your guy in that room. I voted for Bill Clinton. Right? The word charisma doesn't begin to describe it. Right? He stood for things bigger than himself. You understood that. You knew the man was flawed. 
you knew there were holes in his game, right? If you were eating at McDonald's and someone said, hey, man, you know, you're not eating the right diet. Let's say Michelle Obama comes by and says, hey, you're not eating the right diet. In the 1990s, your response could have been, hey, I'm having the same diet the President of the United States is having. Now, that's Manny Pacquiao. Right? Supporters understand he's not perfect. Right? But they're loyal to him. Think James Carville. Right? They're loyal to him. They know what he stands for. Right? They sense, even without him really talking about it too much, that he's concerned about what's going on at the local hospital that he wants to build hospitals, that he wants to help people, that he's a superstar who, in the middle of a superstar career, decided to run for government in the Philippines, right? They know that. His trainer has Parkinson's. Sometimes Freddie Roach shakes. They know that his trainer has a strong personality and sometimes isn't on the same page with him. You can imagine Freddie Roach saying, damn it, Manny, more basketball during training camp? You need to give up the basketball. Damn it, Manny, are you a fighter or not? We have a training camp. What are you doing touring all over the place? Manny, I want you in Vegas. You're here in the Philippines. What's going on? You know Freddie Roach has a strong personality. But yet you know that Manny Pacquiao would never leave him. You know that Manny Pacquiao saw that Freddie Roach had Parkinson's and stood by him. Right? You understand who Manny is. Right? You look at Manny Pacquiao's entourage. It really is like Ali's entourage. Right? Manny seems to be hanging out with guys who he knew way back in the day. Right? You don't have to be a celebrity to be a part of Manny Pacquiao's entourage. The guys in Manny Pacquiao's entourage are loyal to him. They ride with him. You see Manny Pacquiao's mom ringside sometimes at fights. You understand how, that Manny Pacquiao is close to his mom. Right? Sometimes you see Manny's wife ringside. You understand Manny's trying to make up to her for past philandering. She's hanging in there like Hillary Clinton hung in there, right? People see how Manny Pacquiao has dealt with Alex Arisa, right? As with Slick Willie, there's a feeling that somewhere along the line, Manny Pacquiao may have cut corners, Right, Freddie Roach himself fell out with Alex Ariza and, of course, talked about how it was a little bit uncertain exactly what Alex Ariza was giving his fighter. Now, maybe everything's on the up and up. Perhaps Alex Ariza, it should be noted, it must be noted, is now part of the Mayweather camp. The interesting thing, though, is the fact that Manny Pacquiao has not spent any time trying to diss or discredit Alex Ariza, right? Ariza was once a good friend, right? Manny's handling that situation with a lot of class. So, as Pacquiao enters the ring, I'm expecting the fans to root for him. Right? Charisma is hard to define. I can't define it here. I can just tell you with certainty that just like Ali had charisma, just like Sugar Ray Leonard had charisma, in fact, let me be kinder to Ali and Leonard, just like those guys have charisma today, so too does Manny Pacquiao. So as Pacquiao enters the ring, let's say he's stepping through the ropes right now. And as he looks around the crowd, he's going to know in Floyd Mayweather City, 
that it's his crowd. He's going to know that they're there with him. He doesn't have to delude himself into believing he's perfect. He knows he has flaws. But the beautiful thing with Manny Pacquiao is that his fans know he has flaws. They're riding with him, just like his entourage. Let's put a percentage on it. How much of the crowd do you think is going to be pro Pacquiao? How many people paid the hundreds, the thousands of dollars to be in the crowd to root for Manny Pacquiao? I think it's going to be at least 65-35 Manny Pacquiao. Let me tell you, I was in Vegas for the Canelo Floyd Mayweather fight. In fact, I was in Vegas for the Floyd Mayweather Oscar De La Hoya fight. Now, I wasn't in the arena because I'm one of these gadflies who likes to hang out in sports books. But I can tell you my sense the Canelo weekend was that at least two out of every three people in Vegas were rooting for Saul Alvarez. Right? Floyd Mayweather is like Barry Bonds. Bonds is probably, in fact he is, the best baseball batter I have ever seen in my life. Look at the numbers. Right? I can tell you that Barry Bonds had years where his on-base percentage was over 500. I can tell you, I believe it was 1996, at the All-Star Home Run Derby, when Bonds was still thin, he takes out Mark McGuire in the Home Run Derby. I can tell you Barry Bonds had multiple gold gloves. Forget his hitting. I can tell you Barry Bonds was the National League's first 40-40 guy. I can tell you I was watching a Giants game. The Giants were playing their enemies, the Dodgers, in Los Angeles. And I can tell you Bonds was so dominant that Dodger fans stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Right? All of that said, Barry Bonds wasn't loved. He just wasn't. Neither is Floyd Mayweather. So it's the first round. And I'm telling you that Manny Pacquiao is going to have a decided hand speed advantage. It's going to be decided. I'm telling you, even though Floyd has shown some great legs in recent fights, the Guerrero fight, I'm telling you Manny Pacquiao is going to have a foot speed advantage. I'm telling you that Floyd Mayweather, a counterpuncher who relies on familiarity, Right? Counterpunchers are the safe crackers of the sport. He's looking for pattern recognition. He's looking to solve the puzzle. In the first round, Manny Pacquiao is going to be totally unfamiliar to him. So you're Manny Pacquiao. You know you have hand speed. You know you have power. Here's what I think Pacquiao needs to do. Here's what he has to be working on in his camp. How do you beat a counterpuncher? By giving him nothing to counter. Pacquiao has to drop that weak right jab of his. It's ineffective. It's just a placeholder. Right? It's not going to bust anybody up. He needs to just drop it. He needs to lead with power punches. Right? Don't tap a counter puncher with the jab because that's a tell. Mayweather will then know you're setting up a left hand. Get rid of the jab. Dance around the ring. Bluff on your way in. Right? Don't just do a drop step and come in because the drop step's a tell. He needs to bluff, bluff, bluff. Then he needs to lead with a straight left hand. Right? He needs to pick the spot so that Mayweather is unprepared for it. If I'm Manny Pacquiao, I don't waste a lot of time throwing other punches. Folks, it's the first round. Mayweather doesn't know the angles. Mayweather's a slow starter as it is. Mayweather got dropped by Zab Judah in an early round. The ref just blew the call. His glove touches the canvas. 
In that first round, Manny has to go for it all. Understand, if he drops Mayweather in the first round, it could even be a flash knockdown. It could be like the Judah knockdown, where he just gets Mayweather off balance, hits him flush, Mayweather goes down, his glove touches the canvas. Understand the crowd dynamic at that point. The first round would be a 10-8 round. The crowd would sense, in addition to Pacquiao being up by two rounds, right, 10-8, the crowd would sense that Pacquiao is viable. The judges would sense that Pacquiao is viable. Right? In my opinion, and I know it's not supposed to be this way, right? In the hypothetical world of boxing, judges start every round with the fighters on an even playing field and they just judge that round. In the sport I've watched, a guy's on a roll. A judge is going to say, you know what, Manny looked good in that first round. Maybe it's his night. Second round happens, the round is close, they're going to shade it to the guy who they think's on the roll. If in that first round, Manny Pacquiao drops Floyd Mayweather, severely staggers Floyd Mayweather. Let's say Floyd doesn't go down, but he's hit and he staggers across the ring. The crowd's going to go nuts. Mayweather is never going to get the crowd back. Understand, after you hurt Floyd, then you can open up. Then you can throw a lot of punches. You and I know the way it works. It won't even matter if the punches land. If you've knocked down a man, then the guy gets up and you're just flurrying and being active. You're going to win all the rounds in which you're active. My point to Manny Pacquiao, is that this advantage will only last a short period of time, right? By the fourth round, Floyd Mayweather is going to figure it out. He's a craftsman. So it's in the first round that Manny is going to have to make a big first impression, right? He's going to come in the ring. The crowd's going to be on his side. He needs to come out that first round. In my opinion, he needs to pick a spot. Then he needs to lead with power shots. Right? Have no pattern. Just throw power shots when you see it. Right? Don't worry about a full-blown combination. You don't want to show too much of your hand to a counterpuncher. You want to come in, you want to lead with power shots, right? You want to come in, you want to go for the home run. Think about what happened when he fought Marquez. Marquez couldn't figure out the angle. Pacquiao is dancing around. He's not staying in the pocket. Manny, you cannot stay in the pocket with Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather is <coughs> much better than Manny Pacquiao in the pocket. So Pacquiao has to jump around. Rather than use a jab, he needs to use his feet. Set the pace. Set the tone. Threaten to come in. Threaten to come in. Threaten to come in. Come in. Left hand has to be hard. You're going for the knockout. Don't waste time on Mayweather's body. You're not that good a body puncher. He has to go for the home run. Right? That first round, I would say Pacquiao is going to be the better fighter in the ring for those three minutes. Right? If I'm Manny Pacquiao, I come out prepared to stay outside of the pocket, jump around, jump around, 
come in with just power shots, no jabs, right? Now, I've heard some people, people I respect greatly, the matchmaker for top rank, Bruce Trampler, you need to look him up online, great matchmaker, talk about how Manny's style is exactly the kind of style that can beat Floyd Mayweather, right? I disagree. I don't think Manny's two-handed, right? I don't think Pacquiao has a right hand. I'm just being real here. I think Pacquiao, when he tries to stay in the pocket, can be controlled by a jab. We've seen that before. The first Eric Morales fight. So Pacquiao here, in my opinion, has to forget about everything other than trying to get an early KO. I think he has to empty the gun early. If Pacquiao doesn't win this first round, this is how important the first round is. This is how important crowd momentum is. If Pacquiao doesn't win the first round, in my opinion, he loses the fight. Understand, when he walks in, the crowd will be his. Don't give Mayweather the opportunity to silence the crowd, right? If Mayweather comes in and breaks Pacquiao, because Pacquiao's a front foot fighter, he's not a back foot fighter. If Pacquiao throws that left up top and Mayweather catches it, that's the worst outcome for Pacquiao. If you see Mayweather literally with a hand up catch the punch right if he catches the punch with his hand if he's that prepared where he knows exactly where the punch is going to go and he's able to catch it the fight is over Mayweather can't know when the punch is coming he can't time the punch because the truth is I expect these two to fall into a pattern during the fight where Mayweather has the upper hand. The round where Manny is going to have the upper hand is going to be the first round. Right? Don't show Mayweather your pattern. You have to come in and you have to throw your home run punch. Right? Don't fool around with a lot of other punches don't have the idea that you're going to take your time and that you have 12 rounds to get rid of Floyd Mayweather. In my opinion, Pacquiao only has three rounds to really put a hurt on Floyd Mayweather. After that, just like Marquez took over, Floyd's going to take over, and I don't believe it's going to be pretty. So, to the Pacquiao supporters... Just understand, your guy is going to be the more popular guy in the ring, and you already know that. Just understand, your guy is going to have the foot speed and the hand speed advantage in the first round. Right? Just understand, even his own promoter is talking about how America wants to see Pacquiao beat Mayweather. Mayweather is black. He knows he's the underdog in this fight. He knows even in his own country. The odds are stacked against him. But folks need to understand Mayweather's perspective. He's conscious. He knows all of this. So he's going to be in there intently dissecting and decoding Manny Pacquiao. So Pacquiao has to be out the pocket. He has to dance. Then he has to come in with his home run ball. Right? He'll be on the clock from the start of the fight. He needs to make the most of the first round. He has to win it to be viable. If Mayweather silences the crowd in that first round and comes out and looks halfway decent in the second round, if judges don't feel that there's a tsunami of Pacquiao accomplishment and sentiment, if the fight's actually scored on the merits if there are no knockdowns, 
In my opinion, Pacquiao is in trouble. I'll even go further. If Mayweather catches Pacquiao straight left, if Mayweather has it blocked and timed early, this fight could well end up like Mayweather's fight against Arturo Gatti. I'll encourage you to look that up. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.